it is a matter of priority that we turn political intolerance because it is premature for politicians to charge crowds against each other. The sins of Bomet really confirms my statement here when I said that political intolerance is a double-edged sword that can cut anyone, be it opposition or government. President William Ruto must then decide either to launch projects or conduct campaigns. It is only in Kenya Kwanzaa that we are seeing events that are supposed to be happy events of launching projects turning into political battleground. It is not a good precedence for this country. And I argued when I did just the, the video I did before this video, it is untrue that political intolerance and violence that is being witnessed at William Ruto's meetings is happening and is finding him unaware. My position is still that when the president is moving to different areas, he must have an advanced team, intelligence team that must ensure his safety and soften the ground. Now, what I want to show you here will actually blow your mind because how an event that is supposed to be to bring people together and create a feel-good effect turns to be battleground when people draw daggers is a puzzle that I want us here to unpack. I want to show you this video. Watch this video because this is the video. Let's go to the place when where Bad Chok was heckled. <laughs> Haya haya bila bometo mai Rais Karibu Bobet Leo tuko na furaha kwa sababu umetutembelea kwa mambo ya maendeleo Now you will see that people that heckled Barchok in this video heckled Barchok wakiwa mbele yake So this is the time he was talking and the crowd could not allow him to put his point. Strategically, even that mobilized crowd that heckled the governor in front of Ruto, Garia governor Ilkwambeleao, in front of the governor's car. And the president was staring there. Not that the president was inside the car, no. He was also on top of the car. And so, um, after that, that is one part of, that is the other part of the crowd. And I want us to just look into that. Now, I want to play for you the second bit. The second bit, you realize that in the same area where the governor was, uh, there are some other part of the crowd that was celebrating and jubilating in his presence that were supporting him. Ningependa kuambia watu wa Bomet kama vile rais amesema mambo ya siasa imeisha na tunangochea 2027 na mwenye anataka kiti tupatane kwa debe lakini sio kwa mkutano ya rais atutishi kabisa 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 na ujue mimi ni kavana wa Bomet hebu nimbukie mkono pala 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 now, in my clear understanding, that crowd was split into two. Kwamba, Kulkona had the part that was against the governor, and there was a part that was supporting the governor. 
Now, after this venue, hell broke loose. And I want you to look at what happened next. Two camps emerged. There was a camp that was supporting William Ruto. And there was a camp that was against the Ruto's camp. That was against the Barchok. There was a camp that was supporting Barchok. And there was a camp that was against Barchok. So you may need to ask, between these two camps, which one was William Ruto? William Ruto, after Barchok was heckled, showed solidarity and supported Barchok. And even despite of that, coming out and castigating and condemning that violence, he condemned that violence here. <laughs> Maneno ya uchaguzi tulimalizana nae. Hapa hatutaki kujua nani ako marufu kutoa kulinda kuliko nani. Yule mtu marufu hapa ni yule atatueleza vile barabara itajengwa. Na vile stima itaunganishwa. Na vile maji itapatikana. Na vile hawa vijana watapata ajira. Na vile tutatalishi chakula tuondoe njaa. Hatutaki mashindano ya viongozi wakati huu. Mashindano ya viongozi ingoje mbaka 2027. After condemning that violence, even speaking in Kalenjin dialect, still the crowd split into two. And then they started engaging the police in running battles in Bomet town. So if you look at this video, this is after president left Bomet town, I think this is the time they were making the exit to, I think that was Bomet Green Stadium. They were heading there. Um, which ultimately that rally in Bomet Green Stadium did not happen. The crowds engaged in the police with running battles. And in the middle of this, just moments after President's convoy passed, this gentleman here, I want you to look at this video. That gentleman was arrested charging towards the other side of the crowd carrying a Maasai knife and he was not the only one but according to the reports emerging there that there were quite a number of some young people in Bomet that were carrying crude weapons people attending president event with crude weapons what is that what is that what is that? I have said and I will repeat. Heckling and crowds are normally mobilized. The only difference is how you mobilize your crowd. For someone to carry crude weapons to go and attend such an event, number one, the people that may, might have mobilized anticipated violence. Number two, what was what is the so charge against out for someone to even have that confidence and do it he was assured that mambo ni mzuri there is no problem the police are yet to identify the other guys like including this guy who was carrying the crude weapon whose side were they were they the ones that were supporting barchok or were heckling barchok but i want us to look at this and give it a holistic approach. It is not a good precedence for the president's event to turn violent and have kills. And I want to believe that this is the event that have all the state machineries there in terms of security. William Bruton is protected by more than 10 wreck squad. There is supposed to be police, all the police officers around that place, not all, but the police stations around that place, they're supposed to provide security. The governor being present there is also, his security details are there. How is it that violence is emerging in Bomet town the very day that President Ruto is there? I may not understand it and I want you to I want I want us to pause a bit and a bit critical give me an answer why do you think President Ruto's events are actually mad with violence you know 
I listened to them making a very, you know, a very shallow argument that Vita ni watu wa ODM na zimio. Are there zimio people in Bomet? No. So that is not it. They must face the reality. And I want us to look at this in details because squarely I believe that security should be beefed up enough beefed up enough to manage the situation. And number two, even the mood should be different. I want to explain that in details. But before we do that, I also want to get your feedback. I will read the comment section. The next one hour, I want to do the comment section. I want to hear what you are saying on this. Kindly subscribe to our channel. Click the notification bell and like our videos. Thank you very much for your support. I'm glad that apart from supporting our videos in political analysis, you also support our charity program. So we do monthly charity programs. And I'm so glad that we have been supporting even on that end. I want to read what do you think. Because is it high time William Ruto to stop these campaigns? Let's take it. Is it high time to stop these campaigns disguised as development projects, development tours? This is where the problem is. The interpretation of the violence at Ruto's events. This is my position. I am seeing William Ruto trying to micromanage local politics, maybe in his backyards, but forgetting that his persuasion power is low. I'm still to my position. I said in the other video that kama watu wenye wanapanga vurugu katika mkutano wa rais haiwezi pango kama yeye hajui. Na mara mingi lazima ipangwe na watu ambao wako karibu na yeye. That's what I said. So for that to happen, there is a clear point. How did it happen that people engaged, the, the town split into camps, Bomet split into two camps, and this is moments after the president himself issued a warning asking the young people about uh, being peaceful. How? It's only showing that number one problem here, Ruto is trying to micromanage because the truth is, uh, it was the same script in Kericho. In Kericho, Governor Mutai was a heckled and immediately Aaron Cheriot emerged. Aaron Cheriot was uh, jubilated and the president never reacted to uh, Mutai's heckling. Then the same thing happened in Bomet. It is not a good precedence. The other second observation I'm making here is there seems to be a lack of feel-good effect on this project's launched. Let me, let, me, let me just be a bit casual. Uh, when the president goes to a place, like when he went to Bomet, he went to launch some roads, he went to launch um, affordable housing. I think those are the two I remember amongst other projects. So what do you expect? You expect that the locals should be happy and they should be able to put aside their local rivalry and at least be happy that a road has been launched, that affordable housing has been launched. What is this message that President's team should note down? That the roads we are going to launch even the affordable housing units we are launching there that are supposed to give jobs to the young people in Bomet, that is not source of their happiness. People are not happy. That's what I see. So, the, you know, I saw in, in Ruiru we were told that affordable housing projects that were launched have reduced the crime rate. What is that? That they have feel good effect. People appreciate. It is clear Violence when the president is launching a project only shows poor reception of that project. We don't feel you. We don't feel that project. Maybe we just need to aim the real problem. 
The real problem is the cost of living. That's where the problem is. The other third observation I'm, I'm, where, how I interpret this violence is there is a total message blackout in public. Total message blackout. Disregard of the voice of President William Ruto. You know, um, in this channel, I am privileged to have senior citizens. Yeah, in it, when I check, most of people that I interact with in this channel, I need to say that they're people above 50s. We don't, here we don't deal with the young 20s people. I think I'm, I could be the youngest in this channel. So, when people talk to me, there are quite a number that told me, Kevin, when Moe was visiting a place, Moe was a semi-god. You know, you could not say Moe because you didn't even know who was next to you. You, could, you, couldn't even, you couldn't even joke around with the president's name. You, can't even, you couldn't even mean a word. You couldn't say any word of the president. And whatever Moe said was a law. Yes. Whatever Moe said was a law. Now, I'm not saying that what Ruto should say should be a law. But, at least in Bomet, when violence erupts, and then he comes up and says, I don't want this, we should not again see people carrying knives. And even by the mere fact that people are carrying knives, and they're going to make their kingpin, you know, I want you to imagine, give do you, do you want to tell me, Raila, I've ever heard, I know Raila is not Ruto, but let's just use this example. If Raila goes to Homer Bay and some people are carrying knives in that meeting, going to that meeting, you know, it should be a happy mood. Apart from the president, this is one of our sons. We should be very happy. That seems not to be there. The other thing I want to say here, and this is a cautionary point to politicians, the return of money politics. It's a bad manners. People don't fight if they're not fighting for something. I am tempted to believe that these two camps were all facilitated. People don't just die. People don't just carry crude weapons. That level of acrimony and rivalry cannot build. This is a case of politicians have started pouring money to mobilize crowds. And that is why when crowds, when people attend meetings, they attend meetings with a lot of confidence, a lot of convictions, because they want to achieve a political objective. It is the return of money politics that we witnessed in the last general election. And lastly, this is a pure, colossal, Negligence of security and intelligence in Bomet. Pure, colossal intelligence neglect. Because, how? How? The intelligence must have known that there are two camps in Bomet. So that if you will even reduce, you know, you know, that is a national event. It is not even a must that the governor must be there with all those MPs and MCAs and ministers. It's not a must. Imagine there is no law that says the presence they want to launch a road. Imagine there is no law. The road can be constructed even without launching. Without physically president going there to launch. During COVID-19, some projects were continuing. Did you see Uhuru Kenyatta going to physically open that thing that has to be launched? No. It's not a must. If the contractor is on site and has been paid, the work can continue going. If the country, because look at that case. Uyu kijana, akidunga mama, akidunga mtoto. People carrying crude weapons to attend president's event in his own backyard. It is not casual. I know my, many might look at building a mountain out of a hill, but in real sense... That is not best to see from moment. And this must be called out. Violence should not be part of our norm in this society. I think we've outgrown it. A bit disappointed. Thank you.